Hello and welcome to a special edition of Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. On today's show, we'll be focusing on animation and how it has grown in Nigeria. But um, I have my co-anchor here with me, Ifeolu Oshunkeye. Obviously. And yeah, so um, <laughs> we'll be doing the conversation together. But um, before we go into this conversation or even introduce my guest, let's um, watch some clips of animation, animated works done by the people we have in the studio so you understand the caliber of people we have discussing this. We'll be right back. I know that took way. I didn't think at this time would hurt. Trap to 2400 and head not. We are almost there. <laughs> my love, my love. Oh, baby Oko. Baby Oko, you know your election material. <laughs> so baby, what's going on now? Talk to your man. Uh -huh. Um, I just told my, I just called my papa Mo. Oh. She said that she tell you that instead of the 3,000 for the bride price, that you shouldn't worry about the Naira, that you should just make it $3,000. You mean Naira, 3,000 Naira? No, 3,000 dollars. Forget it now. What, for, for what now? Uh-uh. Listen, can you love me too? Now why are you shouting? Am I shouting? I'm not shouting now. Am I shouting? Am I shouting? You just told me three thousand dollars. Am I shouting? Uh-uh. Listen. Okay. Tere, tere, I'm going to text you Usman's number. So you, you just chop water. You go and find out for yourself. What they are t t changing one one uh, uh, naira to a dollar? No, look at these people. Look. But I thought you said you love me now. Oh, you, you don't want to marry me again. Maybe I love you now, but is your love in naira or in dollars? Eh? Is that bright price important due to you? Or are you falling good? In fact, if you lie the way you look that much, baby, you should go love yourself. <laughs> There is something creepy in town. Very deadly and vile. Everyone is scared and weary. Evil locks around with fear and trepidation. It takes no prisoner. Wow, 
Welcome back. So that was um, clips from our guest. But um, you know the art of animation has been charming us with fantastic movie characters for decades. Animation industry is a multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. And with us in the studio to discuss how we can tap into this revenue returning sector is the founder of School Entertainment, Harry Dunku, the founder of Magic Carpet Studio, Fedi Adimefe, and the chairman and CEO of Bonu Nas Empire, Moses Ikake. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you for house. being on the show. Thank you. Okay, I miss a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome on the show. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Mm, I think I want to start with um, Moses because um, the last one we saw is Alobe Virus, mm. and that is supposed to be a full-length movie coming out soon. Mm -hmm. So, what is what? Let's start with the challenges of producing that because I think this has been on for over how many years now? The production, like how many years? Correct me. Mm, eight months. Now. Eight months. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are the challenges and what is going on in that space right now? Yeah, um, so far so good. Um, it's just about the, the team, positivity in terms of um, putting the whole team together and having uh, the old mindset and goal of this is what we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. and this is a global scale, something that will sell globally, not just um, within us. So something that will tell a story about you know Africa and um, Nigeria precisely. How, how we've been able to conquer our challenges and uh, been able to get things put in order. So the challenge so far is um, coming out from you know having a team together, having um, everybody having the same mindset that we are here to do this. So, but it's it's really challenging because of the whole idea of you know we're still having the same network issues, mm -hmm. we're still having the same. Um, electricity, powers, and all that thing. You know, this affect creatives a lot, you know, in the industry. And um, I feel, but at the end of the day, we've created um, a platform that can settle these things. But being in admission, being in admission industry, basically, we have less, um, less platform that really believes in this animation industry. For now, it's still being underrated, mm -hmm. you know? And um, that's one of the major yeah, problem. Because you okay, know, before you go ahead with telling yeah. us how underrated you think yeah. it is, let's go on a very quick break. Okay. Um, but when we return, we'll definitely carry on this conversation. We'll be right back. It's the hottest entertainment stories coming up right here, right now. This is Tea Time. Thank you for the tea. Between yourself and Neymar, I always the best rapper. I'm the best rapper. It might be maybe second after Magneto. Oh, oh, nice! nice. nice. Teddy's going to fry my brains if you saw this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your account number, I'll make a transfer. You get the money? Yeah. <laughs> For me. I started getting scared when the robot boy started saying, you know, we worry people. One thing is certain. If you are good, my dear, mm -hmm. you are good. My kind of person, and I'm not ready to you. cry over any man. You look like Jerul, no? Uh, a lot of people say that. Yeah, just the looks, that's all. Mm -hmm. Not the account. Just, just. Wow. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And of course, this episode is a special one for us to discuss um, our state, um, or let's say the state of the animation industry in Nigeria. Before we went on that quick break, Moses was um, saying something about how you think um, the industry is underrated. So maybe yeah. you touch on that before we bring in others. Yeah. Um, basically, you know, there's a lot to do with animation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we use animation to tell stories and bring back so many ideas that has been forgotten. And at the end of the day, we're creating something for the younger generation. Yeah, mm -hmm. something the um, 10 years from now, people will appreciate mm -hmm. and um, we'll tell our story more because I feel the world need to know about our culture. So using animation to do this, is simply one of the best ways, you know. So because the the, the younger generation and the, the the youth and kids, the adults can relate to to animation basically. Mm -hmm. So, and that is something we've been trying to, you know, dig into and bring out the best out of it. We're tired of 
looking at the Western world. Okay, talking yeah. about our uh, indigenous yeah. story, mm -hmm. I want to touch on Ego Ibo, which was from you. I mean, that's mm -hmm. an indigenous way of telling our story around love and how we relate to marriage and all that. You know, so mm -hmm. what's how how strong would you say using animation would push the story? Well, I, I think um, animation is a very powerful medium, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if you come to look at it, Africa, we have untold stories. Like, mm -hmm. we're a reservoir of untold stories. That's mm -hmm. basically how I like to describe it. If you remember Tales by Moonlight, yeah. you used to have that. You have Tales by Moonlight. I remember my grandmom and even my mom would tell us stories, folklore, folk tales. And mm -hmm. um, we even have wars and warriors, stories of people that we can dig out. Now, the difference between Tor and Shongo is storytelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody decided to tell the story of Tor. Today we can have to we can wear him on our shirts. We can mm. look forward to another movie. Um, so what what storytelling for us in Africa here? It's not just a it's not just something we need to do. It's a competitive advantage from an economic point of view. Let's look at the big studios abroad. I mean, Disney just did a re-release of uh, Lion King, mm -hmm. 25 years after, and um, they are releasing Mulan next year. If you mm -hmm. look at DC and Marvel and all of those, what you find is almost endless repackaging of characters. Mm -hmm. They will bring. Um, uh, Endgame, Spider-Man, Superman, go fight yourself, kill yourself. So, but here in Africa, our stories are yet to be told. So that's what we're trying to do. And I really celebrate my guys here because you're pioneering something that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. Now, we're also working on a 2D feature film. And what we decided to do was to dial back into uh, literature. There was a book we read growing up called The Passport of Madame Ilya. Even then, reading it, it was coming to life. It was very imaginative for me. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I was going to do a story, or a movie about this, it should be this book, right? So we went for it, we got the rights, we went to Ibado, to the publishing firm. They were like, what are you guys gonna do, see animation? They both laughed, they were like, okay, so you guys wanna do a movie of this? Okay, they really did not understand it. In fact, mm -hmm. until I went back to show the man the trailer, he was like, okay, this is it. This looks interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And he's calling us to take a few more rights. But what we wanted to do was to bridge a generation. The older people read the book, the younger people understand the medium. So use the story that they know and tell it in the medium. Because again, people think animation in Nigeria is for children. It's not for children. Mm. And if you want to really do, it's a global commodity. Exactly. Like in Africa, the highest grossing movie from Africa as we speak, it's um, a side ghost must be, must be crazy from South Africa. It's actually um, an animated film, Adventures of Kumba and Zambezi mm -hmm. by Trigger Fish, an animation studio. Mm -hmm. The highest grossing film in Nigeria here came close to 500 million. Right, and a lot of the distribution we don't eat here locally. So you are telling me to create something for a market that is small and don't understand it. Or are you telling me to look at the global picture and look for ways to distribute my film across? Mm -hmm. Because the, the only in, in every year you might just find two or three animated films from Africa. They get a lot more traction when they are distributed than live action. Mm -hmm. So in telling our story here, one thing I think every studio and everyone who's interested needs to do is to first of all put your research on ground. Mm -hmm. Our storytelling is so weak. It took us 10 months. We even went to Kano. We stayed in Kano for like a month. We went to visit the scenes, the Kano world, went to meet the MEM, we went to the libraries because we didn't just want to take a book for it. In fact, we found some discrepancies between some of the accounts in the book and what was believed in Kano. So we had to bridge those, um, those gaps mm -hmm. in telling that. It took us 10 months. Then the second thing is your art, which for us, we're a 2D uh, studio. Like we have a, a great capacity in doing that. So we're going 2D on this. And then the next thing is your sound, which is another area where we need to get right. If you can cover all three, you really go far, mm -hmm. right? And in telling that story, Nollywood is doing a great job. But I think Nollywood on the other level have not deepened our storytelling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, sure. for you to travel globally as a, as a product or a film, you need to carry a universal story that can cut across language barriers. Yeah. But in staying true to who we are, 10% of our, 20% of the content in our film is going to be Hausa language because we're set in Kano. So we are going to be hiring Kushi, Kashi, what, all those things. Mm -hmm. right? Because we, we feel that we are proud of who we are and we are supporting who we are. Mm -hmm. So And we want to drop our language. And um, even the soundtracks are going to be as Tuareg and as house as they come. Mm -hmm. So develop that. Also, the challenge I know we've had in selling our projects is investors. Our okay. local investors don't Before get it. Before you go on with investors, when, he, when you said that... Um, people think animation is for children. Kids, yeah. I saw Harry nodding. <laughs> so maybe you want to share. Um, okay, um, let me even um, expand on that because I, for one, I never watched cartoons growing up mm -hmm. until I discovered Boondocks. Mm -hmm. uh, even up to now, I still don't watch cartoons. You so have to repent. When <laughs> 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 like animation, You're missing. Um, the attributes 
animation characters or animation movies to children and all of that now in terms of telling our story and um parents are also of that opinion how do you intend to change the mind state of people that look it's not just for children you can watch anything the fact that it's animation doesn't mean that it's for kids now because she mentioned that now tell us how you can make grown men like me get interested in animation like boondocks like the likes what stories are we going to tell differently no so let me first of all start by saying that animation is a medium mm. for storytelling comics is a medium as well mm -hmm. film is a medium so um what we should think about is this, is the story itself rather mm. than the medium mm -hmm. so um, we will go to a cinema happily to watch a movie. We would gladly watch, um, read a comic book. So why can't we also take the time to watch an animation, um, an animated movie or okay. an animation? Um, embedded in animated movies or TV series, we have stories that are close to home, mm -hmm. close to the heart. Yeah. Um, I went to the cinema to watch Coco mm -hmm. and I cried, but I hid to cry. <laughs> You get so um, the thing is, and when I went to see the movie, I was the only grown up in the cinema, mm. and it was just weird. Like I had to even, at some point I, I had to hide because I saw Am the I only grown ups, the only grown ups <laughs> that were in the cinema were people who accompanied their kids, and they could be on their phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, so it's it's kind of weird, but the, tr the truth of the matter is that the message is, is always there. The message is always there. And you, you mentioned Boondocks. Boondocks is obviously for adults. There are a lot of adult shows. If you've seen Love, Death and Robots on mm. Netflix, it's mm -hmm. also for adults. But yeah. the, the, at the end of the day, Family the most important the thing... Likes. Exactly. At the end of the day, the most important thing is the story mm. itself. As long as you are open to um, learning about other, other cultures, as long as you are open to embracing or learning new, uh, getting new ideas and stuff, animation is a good medium. Okay, so, so we've been yeah. focusing <coughs> on each individual, one after the other. Now I'm going to come to the three of you at once. What's your favorite cartoon character? Um, On a lighter note. So let's have some fun. My favorite cartoon character. Whew, you have to do an imitation now, so you better be ready. <laughs> um, can you skip to the next person? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Moses, don't do that. What's your favorite cartoon character? And you have to do an imitation. <laughs> okay, um, growing up, I, I love Johnny Bravo. Okay, so yeah. give us give us an imitation of Johnny Bravo. <laughs> well, I prefer doing a Jerry. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Just choose, just choose whichever. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, I think Johnny Bravo will, will work okay, basically. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. It's just do it. <laughs> okay. First of all, his introduction, mm -hmm. Johnny Bravo, mm -hmm. and you know the whole muscle, tiny legs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying to picture myself, you know. In that room. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna look. No, funny. they are not seeing your legs. So. <laughs> 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 okay, let's. I think let's move. To the movie <laughs> I'm sure Fred no, no, did this. No, no, no. I think for me, I um, it's hard to choose because honestly, I'm a story guy. Mm. So I, I, at different times in my life, I found myself full um, from Simpsons to Tom and Jerry to Mickey Mouse, everything that is, because for me, I, I deal on the story. But I, I kind of find the Simpsons character very relaxing mm -hmm. for me. I, I like the vulnerability of a, of a silly, somewhat stupid dad, yeah. but loving. Right? And so um, that's, that's basically one. I would, I would stick with that. What's your for imitation? Now. My imitation. Mm, my, my, my brother, please just pass me. <laughs> yeah, well, so I'm back. So I'm back to you. So yeah, I guess you're ready now. Yeah, so you must I have a lot of cool characters, but um, <laughs> I want to do the one that I'm sure that I can be able to imitate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would do the mask. <laughs> you know, remember the mask? Yeah, of course. Of course, of course, green of head. course I love yeah, it. Yeah, so he says, smoke it. Somebody stop me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody stop me. <laughs> okay, I'm glad oh, that he made me. you yeah. tell us the one you love most. Mm. But, um... Now, in creating a, an animated character, what mm. is the process that goes into mm. it? If you say you want to create a character now, because I know um, there is also a short film getting, getting attention now from Ant Hill Studios. I think mm. that's Malaika. Mm. Yeah. So mm. if, for example, you want to create something like Malaika, what is the process? Okay, I think for me, first of all, um, like I said, we have a pantheon of heroes mm. that we haven't dug into. Mm -hmm. So we dig out a story. But there is sort of like an archetype 
Like in, in developing characters, you have to basically understand that there is sort of a framework with which you work, mm -hmm. right? And looking at the character that can connect. Malaika was actually inspired by um, the story of Queen Amina of Zaza. So they had to, I think a, a lot of that came from her. And that was where the story source is. So it's really identifying the story you want to tell mm -hmm. and then going through the process of research. Who is she giving her characterization in terms of um, what kind of person is she? What kind of, what are peeps and pets? What are pros and cons that she's, and then from there you start before you now start thinking of it. But like Ari said, the story is the key. The medium is just what it is. Whether it's a 2D cutout or a 3D, is a medium, right? Mm -hmm. the, when the story is there, you go into that. Um, so that's basically the character creation process. Once you find the story, understand the character, understand the context in which they were creating, the other sub-characters and subplots that define that before you start creating it. Okay, mm. so they but it's hard to create, you know, that's, that question is really tricky for me because yeah. a character is supposed to be part of a, a movie. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. So it's more like in terms of creating a story mm -hmm. because there are several characters that will be playing key roles in that. Right? But in, typically once the story has been identified and properly developed, you go into that. I process. like the fact that you brought up the story because I was going to go into the categories of animation. But before we even delve into that, let's speak about um, characters because just like every other movie, yeah. there you have to do casting. You need mm -hmm. the right voice. Yeah. You need the right people to exactly. sound the way you want them to. Yeah. Now, what are the challenges in that? Because um, basically, I watched your productions and I realized that, okay, you actually got the right voice. You actually got the right people sounding the right way you wanted them to do. So how difficult is it to get Nigerians to actually play into that role? We've seen people like um, big stars like Nicki Minaj being cartoon characters. We've seen Jennifer Lopez playing, um, using their voices for animation movies. So we how do you can bring you home casting? to We've seen that this way to me. Yeah. So how do you guys get people to sound the way you want them to according to your characters? Yeah, um, a quick one. Um, first of all, you know, the whole idea for animation is not just um, the characters and all that. It's about the storyline. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we, we, we growing up, we're watching Tom and Jerry, Johnny Bravo and all that. And this, these firms, they made a whole lot of, um, you know, ju not just um, revenue-wise, they made a lot of impact and all that and been able to convince people that it's not about um, you know, 2D, 3D, it's about the story you are selling, basically. If the story is interesting, it's itself, mm -hmm. you know, better. You know, so having, um, you know, the, with the whole creation of um, characters and all that, definitely it's about the story, like my, 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 like I said, basically, we look at the storyline, look at what fits into, yeah, this character, you build the character, have a very good history, and have a very good, um, okay, this is what this, this character is for, this mm -hmm. is the key role, this is what you're doing. So, um, so merging, like, um, the, the artist to voice on this, it's not really easy, mm -hmm. at the same time, because it's harder than, you know, acting a normal movie. So is yeah. there is there like a normal cast the way you call people to come yeah, and cast for yes. movies? Yes. Yeah, there's yes. a cast call for that. Usually, you, yeah. honestly, you have a lot of people. Though. You have okay. a whole lot of people. But is it, the conflict I have experienced is sometimes the people we want we can't afford. Yeah. Mm. So and with my voice now, what character would you give me mm. as a creative? Like with my voice, what what what, what character would I possibly play for? Your you? voice now, Jebona. Jebona, one soft tea. Yeah, one. Like just just a oh, they sip tea for tea time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So one thing I, one, one thing I wanted to add before was that um, for me, I'm a character designer. I, I'm, I'm, I'm at, I do art directing very well. Um, a character is very important, especially who plays the character. Mm. If you've seen some movies, they actually model, they actually design the characters to look like the actors. Mm. For example, Moana, yeah. the big guy, he mm. kind of looked like Dwayne Johnson. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so there's something to the acting, the, the cast, as well as the actual the look of the characters. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so, so um, if I was going to do so, well, Shrek like, cannot look like Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, you were yeah, going yeah, to say yeah. if I was going to do someone like me, what would it be? Yeah, so if I was going to do someone like you, it'd be someone, um, somebody very tough on I the inside. I wanted to say that. Yeah, I wanted to say yeah, that. Yeah, someone very tough. Um, but um, still has a soft heart on the outside. <laughs> That's so mean. That's right. Top on the outside. Okay, so um, yeah, let's talk about um, the potentials in the industry for. Yeah. Okay young people out there that would say okay i want to go into this sector i have a passion for it or i think i want to where do they start from 
So first of all, let me discourage anybody wow. that wants to try. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm a very plain person. I like to be direct. So okay. um, I want to first of all discourage anybody who wants Since to start Since you are discouraging, let me make it clear that you have to answer it one by one. Since it's coming from the discouraging yes. part, so I'd like to know what you're saying and what you're saying. Maybe you're okay. encouraging. Mm -hmm. I want to discourage anybody who, to wants to, who wants to start out animation based on passion. They should relax first. Hmm. There's a business part to animation. Hmm. I rushed into it because of passion. And if I, to be honest, if I knew there was a, an Orange VFX or a commotion studio that I'd probably gone to uh, work for them mm. first and build from there, mm. than starting my studio, it is very difficult. Especially doing business in Nigeria is pretty difficult. So if you're passionate about animation, that's good. But think about if you want to work with a studio, yeah, identify yeah, with the studio and start from there first. Mm -hmm. Before, don't just, because now we see a lot of people waking up because they have a talent to draw they start their own studio, Studio XYZ. Right now, I'm sure you can't count how many studios are in Nigeria. There are mm. probably up to more than 100, mm. you know. So every day we hear different names. They mm. should just calm down first. Let's come together. So if I'm guessing you're right, it's a case of telling people to be able to come together yes, and collaborate come to together build the than, industry. Yeah, build yeah. the industry together. Okay, yeah, okay. Moses, I'd um, like you to answer that same question. Yeah, um, first of all, the animation, I, I have... Uh, passion for animation basically mm -hmm. and um, growing up watching these cartoons and I have this you know this um, thing so it's a very good it's a very good industry well, um, because it's about creative basically you have to you have to be creative you have to be smart and you have to be complex how you think basically think outside the box you mm -hmm. know that's how you create mm. something unique you understand so um, the animation industry, I would, I would prefer if we just like um, my, my guy said here, it's good that you have passion, passion but mm -hmm. at the same time you need to understand that the there's business. something called business. Okay. I'm all about business. Mm. Yeah. yeah, as much as there are some things outside animation that I do that I really don't have passion for it, but mm -hmm. I'm into, I'm just about the business. I'm, when I see stuff, I, I look at the business side. So uh, being in the animation industry. I started calculating. How can I flip this into money? How mm -hmm. can I flip this into? Um, how can I flip this story, not just locally, but globally, mm -hmm. that can interpret a story or a culture? Because yeah. I'm all about the young generation. Mm -hmm. I'm all about giving back. Mm -hmm. So doing this is, is sort of a way of giving back to the society, of pushing our culture to the and creating yeah. something for our for our youth, basically. Because it's not just for kids, it's for adults and kids. Like he said, mm -hmm. it's 100% yeah. right. Okay. So, some that we mistake animation for kids. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's the reason you see, oh, you want to go and watch an animated movie in the cinema. Oh, are you a baby? Mm -hmm. No, you don't, you don't, you don't yeah. do that. You know? so the animation industry is, is big, huge. it's mm -hmm. huge. So, it's good that you, you have passion, you know how to draw and all that. Fine. You know, growing up, I used to, I used to work with. Uh, an artist, you know, I love drawing and all that, but that was not the focus. Mm. The focus was, you know, how can I bring things to life? How can I, you know, I've seen what Nollywood they've done, it's fine, yeah, but we can do better. Okay, yeah, right, so um, uh, Freddie, okay. oh, yeah, okay. So, if you are if you're a young person out there, you want to um, follow through with animation, I think you have a great passion if you're passionate about it, and this sector will grow. So, there is an industry that is growing, but like he said. Uh, in the early days of our studio, I was very fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have team people who were, they had concept for what I call video gratification. They were just mm. content. Mm. So we're not making so much money, yeah. but we're really concerned about building. So it was yeah. painstaking. So if you don't, you need to develop patience. Mm -hmm. Trust me, even the softwares you use, the movie we're working on, it's taking us about 24 months, mm -hmm. frame by frame, right? That's how much you pour into this. So it's, it's, it's sweat, tears, and blood. But for us, the impact and the importance of what we are building to add value is much more than anything else. So my advice to a lot of smaller studios there, we can't make much existing as clusters. Yeah. Really, at some point, there has to be mergers yeah. and possibly acquisitions for mm -hmm. those who can afford yeah. to do that, mm -hmm. where all the skills have to gather. When you look at a film from Disney, you find 200 credit names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. and that's how much it takes exactly. to produce a job, yeah. right? So do we have the capacity? Do we have the number? Do we have mm. the capital? We oh. don't have. But in coming together, we have a way to build something, right? Yeah. So we've been having conversations with a few of the studios, like, guys, how do we work together, mm. right? If we have this project and we believe in this project, I don't mind my studio coming to see how we can support. Mm. Let's get the first film out. Yeah. Where we are right now, the music industry was some years back. Mm. But when people started to break into phase, the band, and it took it global, 
it opened the way for every other person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all we need is one or two other um, people to come into that space to do it. So look for a studio, intern, work with, build. And black men, please put egos aside. Yeah. Mm. We are so attached to egos, and let's not get distracted by that. What mm. you're building, you rather be successful in holding 4 5% of a successful company than keeping 90% of a field studio. Mm. And let's not even mm. think about Punch it for line. a second. <laughs> <laughs> right? no, exactly. You may get distracted by the 1M there, 2M here from mm. all these yeah, brands. Yeah. Like, okay, we need one quick ad. Yeah. Trust me, that thing, uh, 12 years down the line, <laughs> all you've done is make a couple you have built nothing. Yeah. Mm. This is a storytelling medium before yeah. it's an ad placement. Yeah. Right, so Thank even while we are sure. trying to meet the, the bill, because that honestly, some of those clients they will go round and round and round and mm. drain your energy, mm. right? So you just have to find a way to balance because in, in the balancing your short term and long term goal is a trick of a surviving or surviving as a studio, mm -hmm. right? If you tilt towards short term, you, you, you possibly lose your creativity and just end up being another agency around the corner. Mm. If you tilt heavily towards long term goal, you might not yeah. be able to sustain it because long term goals need capital, capital. they need time. So you yeah. have to be balanced. So you before you go ahead, it. we need to go on a very quick break. Okay. But when we come back, our studio guests will definitely be here. We'll be right back. It's the hottest entertainment stories coming up right here, right now. This is Tea Time. Thank you for the tea. Between yourself and Emma, I always the best rapper. I'm the best rapper. Emma is maybe second after Magneto. Oh, oh, nice! nice. nice. That is going to fry my brains if you saw this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your account number, make a transfer. You get the money? Yeah. <laughs> For me. I started getting scared when Yoruba boy started saying, you know, we worry people. One thing is certain. If you are good, my dear, mm -hmm. you are good. My kind of person, and I'm not ready to cry look, over any man. You look like Jerul, no? Uh, a lot of people say that. Yeah, just the looks, that's all. Mm. Not the account. Just just wow. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And of course, we are still talking about animation in Nigeria. Before we went on that break, if you were going to yeah, ask a so, question. Um, while we were talking to um, the three of you, Elsie's question, um, one thing was constant, um, partnership, mm -hmm. how to come together. In Nollywood, we have the Actors Guild of Nigeria. Right? Mm. We have bodies like that. Mm. Now, the um, animation industry, are you guys been, are you focusing on creating a body like for you to be in charge of, to oversee and the animation industry in Nigeria? Or is that something that um, you're waiting for the government to put in place? There's, there, there are works, that, uh, there are efforts being made currently to create this um, color. Um, it's called Animation Nigeria. Okay. Um, it was um, are you all established. Of that? Yes. No, but one thing I've noticed, it seems everybody knows everybody in the industry. Yes. Right? It's pretty small. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, so Animation Nigeria was founded um, early this year. We came together to, different studios came together. Yeah. Um, we had a meeting somewhere in Ikeja. Um, I think the ball is rolling, the ball has been set in motion. I do not know exactly where we are on registration, but I know that they went ahead to contact CAC to make this happen. Mm. Um, but yes, that's basically where, and it is actually very necessary to have this. All right, so um, you all agree, right? No, yes, yes, there are talks, actually. So, <coughs> let's talk talks. about the, um, the categories of animation. I know about that. I did a little bit of digging, so don't think mm. I'm a genius in your field. <laughs> it's just, I know we have the traditional, we have the 2D, we have the 3D, we have the motion graphics, and we have the stop motion, right? Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Clap for me now. <laughs> All right, so back to what we're saying. What are your majors? Like, what do you major in? Is it a 2D, traditional 3D, motion graphics? Okay. What's your major? My major is 2D cut out animation. How about you? Yeah, mine is 3D and motion graphics. How about you? We started at the 2D um, traditional, mm -hmm. but we do cut out and 3D as well. So it's quite a bit. We're trying to build capacity in different media. Mm -hmm. Okay, great stuff. Okay, so everything we're talking about boils down to making money, and I heard him saying, we'll flip it, flip it, what to flip it, it's so money. <laughs> so um, if you think the art of animation is not such a huge deal, then you need to think again, just after mm. seeing this compilation of top five grossing all-time worldwide animated box office movies. Have a look.
Animation is a huge deal with a total value of global animation industry at 259 billion US dollars in 2018 and a projection to reach 270 billion US dollars by 2020. Based on the number statistics, here are the top five grossing all time worldwide animated box office movies. At number five is Toy Story 4, grossing over $1 billion. Everyone, Bonnie made a friend in class. Oh, story. she's already making friends. No, no, she literally made a new friend. Toy Story 3 follows closely at number four. Guys, we all knew this day was coming. We're getting thrown away. No, no one's getting thrown away. We ain't ever getting played with. We've got Minions at number three. Banana. Uh, start. Banana. Banana. Incredibles 2 holds down the number two sport. Did you wash your hands with soap? Did you dry them? And at number one, Frozen, a 2013 fantasy and comedy music animated film, grossed 1,272,000,000. 467,910 dollars. I can't feel my legs! I can't feel my legs! <coughs> okay, so that's some money, money, money in billions. So I'll just ask, how much are we worth right now in Nigeria? Freddy? Well, I think um, what I know is the global industry is worth about $270 billion. Mm -hmm. And um, in Africa, we just have about 4% play. Mm. Wow. So it's not very significant, okay. really. Um, the U.S. has about 40%, but the animation market is basically, there's the Asian side, the Asian block, we have quite a bit of it, and in the U.S. In Africa, you have South Africa, Egypt, and I think Kea uh, featured a bit. We are working on our first fe 2D feature film. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Our film is costing us about $1.2 million. But if you go to South Africa, you will produce that thing for nothing less than $50 million. 50, yeah. So in terms of cost comparison, we're way cheaper, right? Why and, are we way cheaper? Um, I think, again, it's a formative industry. Okay. South Africa is an advanced economy, though a smaller economy than we are, right? And um, in, in, a, in a way, we, are, we have the advantage where you can find one person who can do lighting, mm -hmm. do concept art. In places like that, they basically use the, the, the Hollywood model. You're specialized. If you're lighting, you're lighting. If you're a concept artist, yeah. you're mm -hmm. so you have to basically have that. But the advantage we have is that everyone is sort of building something. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like just knocking it out. Mm -hmm. um, the only challenge that I know we've had with money is you need investors who have patient capital. Mm -hmm. Animation is not like Nollywood. Nollywood, you can produce a movie in three weeks mm -hmm. and have your money in six months. Animation, it will take you two years to produce a movie and make your money back in a period of three, four years. But trust me, it is worth the wait mm -hmm. because the scale is huge and it's mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. from all the numbers and indices we have seen. But local investors are not very prone to investing. So a lot of the foreigners are coming. My pain mm -hmm. and, and anger sometimes is we are sitting on an opportunity that we may lose. Because if we lose our IPs and lose our opportunities to these mm -hmm. foreign guys, yeah. we've only been recolonized. So yeah. what's the percentage of return on investment? Because you said it's the going percentage. to take like two years. Yeah, for, for it's almost as high as 120%. Right. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Trigger Fish, their first film, Adventures of Zambezi, released in 2013, did about $36 million. Okay. Right. About $36 million. And that's, how, that's an African studio. So in a sense, they've broken that. Now, we must also keep in mind, our local cinemas are growing. Mm -hmm. mm. Right. They are growing and they are doubling. And there's a growing cinema culture. Okay. So if you have a story that will pop, you have the numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. So I do think that locally our market can deliver something. You can even break even on a local cinema mm -hmm. if your marketing is done right. I mean, if you put um, movies like Wedding Party, they've proven it. Mm -hmm. Have your P&A, your publicity and advertising yeah, costs. Yeah, that right. was where I'm going to and come to. And I was going to take it to you, but you said it initially. You were mentioning storytelling, mm -hmm. everything needed to produce it, but you or to make the money, but you didn't mention PR or promotions. <laughs> and I think that's one of the issues <coughs> I've had with um, even people in Nollywood, because mm. they tell you, we have a movie out there, nobody's seen it. I asked yeah, them, how did right. you push it, yeah, right? Yeah. We sit here in Nigeria and hear about a movie coming out um, of Hollywood in the next two weeks. It's not, it's not magic. They yeah. worked on it for you to get here. Yeah. So you have something coming out very soon. Yeah. What is the plan in place for this to get the, the attention in it? Yeah, yeah um, we're, we're working on that and uh, we've been able to create a lot of um, marketing strategy on using the new media as an advantage, mm -hmm. you know, and also partnership. Okay. Being able to partner because sometimes it's not all about monetary, you know, but we're able to take advantage of values, you know, that um, okay, we have some partners in the US 
that oh they love the idea they love the storyline fine they want to partner with with the bw studios to create how we can push this to the global scale okay. the original plan was um, like a series a youtube series and all that and the story is amazing basically the storyline and um, we were putting our best to get as much as um, a 90 percent of a normal hollywood or a disney firm so mm -hmm. Um, animated uh, film. So we're looking at, okay, why don't we push this to the world, basically, not just, okay, so we're doing um, um, different languages. We're okay. not do, not just English, we're doing English, we're doing Pidgin, we're doing um, Yoruba, Igbo, and Swahili. We're doing okay. French as well. Hmm. So as, as well, we can break into other African countries, mm -hmm. you know, so that's the whole idea. And the marketing strategy is coming out real well, real good, and um, we're just taking advantage of the, the new concept. So we have some really amazing surprises. Yeah. Okay. Trying to change you, the game. The revenue angle, how is it working out for your angle? So um, he has spoken about, I want to come from a different angle now. He has spoken about um, feature film, mm -hmm. making money from feature film. He has spoken from his own intellectual property. I want to speak from the angle of service, okay. animation service. Mm -hmm. I believe in service. Like the principle of service works in leadership, mm -hmm. in life generally. Mm -hmm. I believe that until you serve, you don't understand what it means to be a lead, a leader. You get so coming from the angle of service, I want to model my business after the way the Indians did it. Mm. And let me explain. Indians are very so the Indians what they did is that when they started out, instead of doing feature films and stuff, what they did was that they actually took service work from the Disney's, the DreamWorks, who we'll do your work for you at a cheap rate. Mm. So we'll produce it for you and we'll make our money. I'm making our money like that with good, decent profit margins. I'm, not, I'm talking about profit margins of like 75% upwards. Mm. They are making their profits and they are doing the work for these guys. And then while they are doing this work, because they send them assets to be able to produce. So if you want to produce 3D animation, for example, they send you the models, the character models, the rigs and everything. And then you have to, they have to animate it with the environments and all. So with that, they began to expose themselves to the quality that the... That the um, first world or the advanced world or the developed world, the Disney's and stuff. So with that, they got the, they understood um, the quality that they needed to deliver over time, that the international or the global animation industry demands. Mm -hmm. And then over time, they built that. And they're making money on the side. Before they knew it, they said, okay, let's put these resources together and produce our own intellectual property. And they could be able to, they could be able to bankroll it themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's the model that I believe works. I'm not saying that every other model doesn't Has work. I'm saying yeah. that for me, that's what I okay, think works. Okay, so, we actually uh, need to go. Yeah, <laughs> but you want, is it a quick question? Yeah, um, it's a quick question, but it's double barrel. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm always coming with a double barrel. So um, on a scale of one to 10, where do you think we stand in the entertainment in the animation industry in Nigeria? You first. Four. How about you? I'll go with um, six. Yeah. I'll keep it on a five. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> okay. Uh, three, so, four, five, five, six. so three, four, four, five, six. No, four, five, six. Four, four five, five, six. six. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. So now we're going to also focus on um, the fact that people regard animation as a genre. But animation, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's a genre because a lot of people say it's a genre. I think it's an art form and yeah. you can actually do any genre yeah. you yeah, choose to. Genre. Now, is it right to say animation is a genre or it's an industry on its own where you can actually do anything and everything? Animation is an art form, like you said. Mm. You know, if you pause every frame in the movie Spider-Verse, everything mm. was like... They, they actually painted, like they painted yeah. each frame individually, they treated mm. each frame individually. So, like you said, animation is an art form. We need to see it that way. And that's why animation is expensive, because it's like making paintings of multiple frames. You are doing multiple paintings together. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you feel get, when so that's what makes it expensive? Well, animation unfortunately, that's how no, much I, 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 we I think, can I think it's an evolving conversation. Yeah, People, we'll there's a great have understanding. to continue this conversation going forward. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, you, and sir. that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always go to my co-anchor, Ethel Lewash, okay? And the entire production team. And of course, our guests, Freddie, Moses, and Harry. Thank you so thank much you. for taking Thanks our for time to be thank here. You for us. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later. Thank you.